Case Serato specifically was amazing in their last series. Um, second map, he only had 60 ADR, but he was like 19 and 13. And so there was basically no stopping him when it came to actually finishing off kills. And yeah, Furrier, Furrier is brought up on the death that they play with no respect when it comes to MIBR. So we'll see if that can change it all with TRK on the team. That's the storyline of the hour. That's the big one. And also, obviously, art. The aggression, the space creation. The guy is kind of a an untamable beast when it comes to the entries. So, ooh, welcome to the big leagues. TRK ate the Glock shot. Vinny able to double this one up, but there's a lot of bodies here for MIBR. They still have two players inside a short, and they have to keep their heads on a swivel peeking back and forth, still one up for element of surprise. Cuts off a single player in the 1v3, has a chance to re-engage, but decides to take the duel. And the 2v1 flex for Furia is what gets them first pistol. Yeah, there's all these micro wars going on in that battle to get up onto the A site. And the first one here is Ooh. Vinny. He actually grabs two with this Glock, really nicely done by Vinny. Everybody else moving on and, you know, you've got two players that are trying to watch each other's backs, but you're both between a crossfire. Fallen is doing most of the heavy lifting and Fur is just there to trade. He luckily gets one, but Fur can't finish off the 1v2 on top of trading. It's just a bit too much to ask of him. So, Furia up 1-0. and zero. We go on to the A ramp once again. And here's where the attention will be turned. And yeah, I like what you said about Art. I'd say... He is so creative, and I feel like Art is such an appropriate name for him because of that. Yes. And no, I mean, I, maybe it's not a coincidence, but I see a lot of fallen style of opping in Art's opping as well. You know, how wide he takes angles, uh, how, aggressive he, how aggressively and comfortably he plays at all times of the op. And I think that's what helps him be successful and pull off such amazing plays constantly. Here he is, creating space inside of CT spawn, really messing around with the... CT's in connector, but Fur will best him with just that pistol. Unfortunately for the counter terrorist, the only B defense came in the form of Taco, and he is down. So Yuri, Moe's three. Fallen and TRK still looking to pick up some pieces here. Little to lose, except now that they've grabbed that AK, they stutter step, but they are not falling back until now. So chewing through their options, Mohan, but they have decided to let this one slide. 2-0 the start for Furia. Yeah, it was too it was too tough. There was too much fat on the stakes. They couldn't chew through it, so they're gonna give it up. Save. They've got good guns to save, it's fine. I mean Mac 10's not amazing, but uh at least they want to protect the AK and uh, utility belt here for Mr. Fallen. Two face Toledo. See which one we get today. I played Minecraft the other day with Taco and uh, <laughs> That's that a was weird a lot thing of fun. to be able to say. Yep, I'm just going to leave it there. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, that VOD is available on the internet if you can find it. So it, he really did play Minecraft with Taco. It was a cool thing. Here we have... Most, most ambitious crossover <clears throat> since Infinity That no War. one knew they needed. We've got uh, the pistols, Mohan. Just a couple pistols added to what was saved. So it's, it's really not all too much to talk about, except for our eyes fall on TRK. The first time... Uh, you know, getting a chance to see him in this system. I like that he's tasked with that solo AK, but uh, not going to be in a position to really make it work. He's still over towards that opposite side of the map as to where Furia are right oh. now. They're waiting out the smokes. They've found Taco. Poor guy never stood a chance. All the while, yeah. Henny, he's getting aggressive at the top of middle. And by charging headstrong in this direction, they've got themselves a really good pinch coming in on it on B. I really want to see as many B takes as we can. You know, I want to see different approaches to it with mid or just full on B site. And oh my God, fallen. Nice couple of Deagle shots here. Yuri going to be the next up to the plate. He gets taken down by TRK. This round is back on. It looks like the CTs will start to move in. There's still half of the time left on the diffuse. Yeah, it's going to be one of those those moments that's like it's tantalizing to run in here and try and get on top of that bomb. But with the smoke grenade on top of it, too, somebody could theoretically stick the spam, though, the spam damage and whatever comes with it. Just looking to rack up costs here versus Furia. It's more as if MIBR are looking to hinder their mm. opponents as opposed to succeed. But they get nothing further. No kills. And both of the survivor, both of the survivors for Furia are good. Yeah, really the uh, the sad Goosebumps ending to the story, the, the one where you really get nothing, and it's just tragic the whole time. 
you and your teammate die because you got three kills and you thought you could win the round, but no kit. They got to the bomb way too late to get the 10 second defuse in, and with the smoke, that gave them even more confidence to try it. So all these kind of positives that played into them getting themselves killed. TRK, first man up to bat on the A ramp. Will he get a kill? It looks like he sees one. Player drops in from below. That's Art. Gets the better of him. Some damage and a couple of name tags, but not a kill. Ouch. And the frag volley follows suit. I mean, there was a world there where TRK gets the opening kill and an MIBR could play off of the 5v4, but because he had already expended some of his ammunition, shooting the sides of the smoke, trying to go for those deeper spams, that when he finally has confirmation, when somebody emerges and he sees him, he doesn't hit it with the bullets that were left. And even though he does substantial damage, can't finish off the kill, the magazine runs dry. So mm -hmm. unfortunate. But that's the cost you pay when you go for the spam shots. So now it's going to unfold into the B pinch. Poor Taco back here. Minimal cover. Fire at his feet. Smoke in his face. And a teammate on the back to try and hold off this construction split. But both of them die. So the B site falls into the hands of Furia. Oh, and okay, down man. goes Fallen. That's a hell of an angle. Didn't even look like you could see a head there. Just his arms sticking out. It's a nice round from Furia. You know, they play it very relaxed. They go back to mid in the 5v3. And I like that approach because if, first of all, mid is lesser played when you're low on numbers because it's not a site that you can plant on. And so if Furia want to entertain the idea of mid, they just have to give Taco to something to pay attention to on the B ramp while they work on that and then trying to find out where his teammate is. And it's technically an overstack from MIBR towards B, so they're anticipating it. But still, because they were low on numbers, Furia were able to take their advantage and press it into a win. Art, toward short, dropped by the Deagle of Fallen. Art's one of these players who you've, you've got to constantly keep your eyes on him when the round starts over at this A site, because every once in a while he just throws himself up short faster than you can keep track of. But right now the trade train's not going to the way of Furia. In fact, they've lost the entirety of their A plush, and now it falls onto Henny and Vinny to try and clamber back into this two versus three. They change direction, sprint towards B, and what are they gonna find here? Taco's chilling on the site. He's been seen oh. and swiftly swept under the rug. Nice precision there from Vinny. He's got the bomb too, so he'll be tasked to plant. Gets that in with ease. Remember Fallen barely alive, but still well equipped. He is the only reason that MIBR really in this round. Three kills currently to his name, and he's gonna take the forefront of this push. Both the CTs trying to get around the green box, but Vinny, he's got him. Dead to right, a headshot to finish off. He's amazing. He's been great on these Antiquos, first of all, um, getting a lot of kills by himself, whereas teammates did such a terrible job trying to trade in this area. Fallen, he does have a Deagle, and these body shots are extremely powerful, but, you know, one for one versus these pistols up close is is unacceptable from, like, a, a kill standpoint on an Antiquo. Vinny picks up the slash, but I also just love the idea of Furia constantly going back to B in these late rounds. And you can see Taco's spot, and you'd be like, why, Taco, do you peek there? And it's because if they get any closer, I mean, the angle only gets less good the closer you get, even though he has the MP9. It's such a small box now, and you just don't have a lot of wiggle room. So you're almost in a one-and-done position. You can't get a medium distance fight down the ramp. Yeah, one-and-done, just like where Taco found himself at the start of this round. He was very much committed to the wooden wall. Burr was supposed to be here to give cover and did trade efficiently. We sit 4v3 to the favor of MIBR, but oh man, he can't find any sanctuary or safety within those flames. Fur burnt to a crisp. Oh man, and they've outplayed him. Full rotation from Furia over to the A site. Sure enough, MIBR, they're pushing top middle right now. KNG's collecting that info. Furia could have just sprinted right in, but Obviously, they're going to play it safe, and that will buy time for MIBR to rotate, maybe. It's a bit of a game of conditioning. This is a really no one's aggressive flank. flank. Yeah, nice, nicely played here from KNG. It's exploited a weakness. Low on numbers this time for the CT side. First of all, tell your friends, okay? Don't even bother with the fights. Oh, okay, he's got the lineup. Oh, my God. All the stars aligned. That was just beautiful. Yeah, now MIBR, not the ones seeing stars. Furious, stunned by the flank, low HP for Keserado. Two players to take ahead of him, both of which lining up in, la, in elevator. 
but he's got that bomb tuck, so at least a little injection of money here at the end of the round. Goes for the peak, he's gotten out. <gasps> oh, he was given a chance. Could have snapped back with the AK, but alas, we have it. MIBR, break the streak of Furia. It's one round to five, but at least the CTs are now on the board. Yeah, and then versus the op, you know, low HP doesn't matter too much, so could have been a, a cool 1v2 attempt. This round brought to you by KNG. Nicely done there on that flank down the ladder. Um, intelligent play, kind of exploiting the same weakness that Furia did versus them when they were low on numbers, going to their version of mid in a sense, coming down the ladder after taking mid control himself, and um, yeah, finding a creative way to defend A, but at the same time pulling off the flank and gaining so much information for the rotations. I have a feeling if they didn't give him an opening for the 2k spray down or 3k spray down lineup that he would have just called for rotates and stalked these guys to make sure that they could trade out effectively. But of course, if he sees an opportunity, he's going to strike because he's that good. All in about to strike a couple players down. Good patience there. They were waving at him with their elbows. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Art on top of the head. Look at Taco's crosshair. He's not expecting a player to peek from the left here. Or maybe. Molotov. Oh, it doesn't spread. Not going to creep. No. Oh, until now. Yes, it does. A little delay, but it hits the mark. Art down. Fallen. Scoped. Stairs closed. He's going to have to extinguish the fire behind him, but in that time, KS Dorado does start to move himself closer. Another good volley of utility here gives him a chance, but Fallen, within the chaos, still able to come out on top of this. And look at MIBR go. They break into this board, and now look to follow suit with five alive. Everybody standing rock solid from Fallen. Four kills, as he is now 11 and four. Yeah, Big Daddy Fallen with the nice hold to help out his team. Though Taco's utility, important too. It didn't feel like he knew until he threw that um, incendiary off the side of the stairs. And then it felt like he, they were going to get a false sense of security. That is Furia because the Molotov hadn't spread to the point of touching art. But it was a last tick situation. And since he was on the back end of the Molotov, once it hit him on the last tick, he had to take so much damage swinging out into Taco's spread. Damn. Lots of utility usage to try and buy for control at the bottom of A, Art, on the side of the smoke. That's going to put these last two CTs in a very compromised spot. I mean, look at Art. He could wrap around short if he pleased, but he decides to go for the head and drops one. Aggression from Henny. In from short, 3v2 man advantage for Furia. That was a hell of a clash to start the round, Launders. They're playing this round with no inhibitions here. Art was like, yeah, I'm going to PQ. Yeah, I'm going to PQ. They spray. He's like, yeah, I'm still going to PQ. And he just swings out, even though there's two people there waiting just for the kill because his teammates only have pistols. So always scary to fight a homeless guy, a team that has nothing to lose. That is Furia right now, who are coming into this with pistols. And now we're in the 2v1 to be able to close out the round. Negligible grenade. Taco. Going to throw a quick smoke. Tries to get vision on short. He's trying to sniff out Yuri, who goes for the peak, gets the duel, oh, takes man. the damage, but also gets it done. Six to two, Yuri up, back in control. I don't even know how Yuri plays that box so well. So first kill, of course. Incredibly important for Art to believe that he can make space for free. If he gets that one early one on A ramp, he knows that he's he's forked another player because there's another player whose spot is contingent on KNG staying alive, and now that player is going to be scared. So he takes that as a sign to just go ahead and, and, and kind of run up aggressively. And of course, because they have pistols again, they'll move even faster. Ooh, Art. Slippery Snake has tucked himself behind the sandbags. Walks back down ramp, tries to go for the spam. He's going to lose out on that engagement for now. But TRK, he's committed to behind the cover. Oh, and he dies through smoke. I'd, I'd love to see that in the replay if we can. Mm. I don't even understand how that angle works. Oh, I guess he came out. I thought he was still hiding behind that piece of metal. Uh, but it seems as though he attempted escape. Look towards B. I think this is where Taco's palms get sweaty a bit in the round because you come into the mid round a bit, a kill comes down for Furia, they threaten B constantly, and Taco's got to invent new ways to hold this site down. And yeah, Ouch. Vinny's okay with that one. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Looking to follow suit. Jumping over the boxes. Still so many angles to learn on this newer bomb site. 
It's true. It's very true. Trying to see what sticks, what stays. Definitely a intimidating position for Fur to be in. If he doesn't have info on mid, then at any point someone could come clamoring over construction. But all of that was a ruse. It fooled us all. It's to the A site that that bomb will head. Down to the ground for the time being. Yuri's yeah, trying to go. get it back up, but... Oh my god, they're just gonna go for the kills instead. I mean, this is one of those moments where the, the bomb has... I mean, they don't have to retake yet. They're already in the process of the retake, and, and the bomb is only now attempted to be planted. Eight seconds, and the CT's really trying to force the issue, but they've given away their man advantage and fur with everything to do. He's gonna need four kills on the round, and in the 1v3 does some damage, but finds nothing more than that. Furia, 7-2. Fur with a full utility belt made that all possible, but where it falls apart is Furia's amazing ability to, while they're planting the bomb, also do damage through the smokes. And that yeah, doesn't even allow MIBR to get in reasonable positions to try to defend. You know, even going up to shoot our man back CT, who's just trying to peer over the smokes, maybe even just spam ends up getting killed before the bomb gets planted. So gotta appreciate Furious patience. Even when they're so close to the end zone, they don't they don't fluff it and they wait to see if any more utility gets baited out. And they still juggle the fact that they have a lot of time left over with the fact that they have teammates beside them and the opportunities that they can kill people that are rotating in. You ever see those videos of idiots celebrating before they get the touchdown? They start yeah. like dancing at the 10 yard line. Yes. Furia, yeah, they're not one of those. Not not one of those, yeah. They're like a Usain Bolt who celebrates but still like breaks the world record. Yeah. yeah. I remember you had stats on Usain Bolt and like the. Uh, uh, you, he runs an average. On the top at his head. peak speed, he runs at almost 12 meters per second. Think about that. 12 meters per second. It's something I want, seven, I want everybody 11, at home, tur 11 or turn your 12 chair meters around. per second. Turn yeah. your chair around. Look at the floor behind you. Measure out yeah. 12 meters and try like to cover it in a second. <laughs> uh, it may be oddly specific. Don't shine the spotlight on me. Spotlight should be on Furia. They're making mincemeat of the anti-eco. It, it was all very tense for a moment. Everybody postured, but then once the smoke faded and Furia made their move, expected result. All the CTs die. We're at that six round lead for Furia, but at least the silver lining. It's MIBR back in with a buy. Mm -hmm. That is nice. We'll see what the full kits can do. Really loving, I, you know, when Furia started playing this map initially, I thought they were gonna be the very best uh, Vertigo team. They ended up being more so at Strawless and Furia were a team who really liked to go mid a lot and show us what they could do at mid. And I always really appreciated that about them because everybody else's Vertigo is so boring to watch because of all the A takes. Um, but it's because that was the better strategy. Uh, now we have Furia who kind of were good at that mid aspect already and are just in general good at exploring things other teams don't and are giving a lot of attention to, to B, which I really appreciate. And it's making for an interesting game and a difficult one for MIBR to try to find anything in. These teams back in April clashed on Vertigo. Score 16-4 to the favor of Furia earlier this month in May. An improvement as MIBR got to 10 rounds. Maybe the third time's the charm. But at the moment, we're trade training over here on the A site. Again, short is where the victims fall for MIBR. KNG posted, but remember he is tagged. 19 health is not a lot to work with. You just, that's never where you want to lose the rounds, right? Yuri's kind of there for the taking. They just needed to get like an extra body shot in and don't get the kill. And now they have to play extremely timid. See if the bomb goes down. Try to get some free damage in with utility. It's a much worse round. And they don't even know that it's the A site just yet because they're worried about lurks. Bomb comes over. Trying to hit the bang. He gets it slightly. He's no Nafly. No, no. But yeah, you see this? That Fur was still entertaining the thought that it could be the B site because Furia have attacked it so many times. And even rounds where they kind of had both sites open, decided to go back to A. And so they had no choice but to kind of play between both sites. And it's the worst of both worlds for MIBR here on the CT side. If you're for Furia, they have the pick of the litter. I think one of the more underrated aspects of the Vertigo changes, I mean, like B, B is the glaring difference. 
uh, top middle with the lack of window and new construction is also a talking point. But I really like this new connector from from lower B to lower A, mm -hmm. um, that very narrow corridor um, and the, the deep corner tuck over towards where the, the old entrance used to be. Um, as, as, as a map that, you know, you've got to constantly be quiet downstairs in order to not give away audio cues to the players above you, those CTs who are always up there. Um, it's nice. It's a good passage. It creates nice rotations, and I think it creates that uh, that anonymous, oh, that anonymous feeling of like, is there someone at B? Is that threat still looming? Mm -hmm. Plays into yeah. the heads of the defense. It speeds up the walking rotation by like, you know, six or seven seconds, something like that, um, walking through that hallway. So it's a huge boon to the T side. Huge. Anonymity. That, that was the word a that I anonymity. didn't dare try. Anna, Anna, an, an automaton. <laughs> An amalgamation like of that. automaton. <laughs> we'll get there one day. For now, it's Art. Has a little bit of a task ahead here as he swings the op around the closest corners of short A. Ooh. <laughs> 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 okay, Angie. Hey, you guys want to? Oh, another one. No oh way. My God. Yo, Caserata's like, could you guys be any louder? They're literally uh, crouch walking. Holy crap. Poor guys. MIBR. They try to take the initiative, and the moment KNG puts himself in position for the boost, those shots start coming through. It had been silent on this A bomb site right up until then. But Taco on the flank. And he is starting to crawl forward with Fallen getting a kill and Fur adding one to the kill feed. This is huge. Taco, he could be the difference maker. He's got the back turn. Easy pickup. And the second on site goes down. Taco puts himself into the mix of the offense and they never saw the backstab coming. Did you see how K-Serato didn't turn for any of that? I, mm -hmm. I want to say that maybe that's the benefit of the Silence M4 there. That actually had like a huge effect. Maybe there was slight comms on top of it, but he just had no idea. He could have turned his back sure. to default and fought Taco if he wanted to. I guess there's a world there too where like a short peak could have been the demise of the first player. So maybe he's not, uh, he's not expressing just how dangerous or how much, how yeah, close how he was. Dangerous Taco yeah. was. Something like that. You fill in the words, all right? Yeah, yeah. No, maybe it was hard to tell, you know, how oh, close Vinny's he was. Oh, Vinny's birthday. Wow, happy birthday, Vinny. Birthday. I hope Mohan that, I always hope that if I was a pro player that I'd play well on my birthday. And he's been playing pretty freaking well. So that's good. That's nice. Mohan, what do you want to be when you're 21? When I'm 21 the next year? Um, yeah. An alcoholic. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Powerball winner. Get start early, right? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Smokes and flashes at the bottom of B. A little bit of posturing going on here. I like that MIBR starting to seem uh, a bit more adventurous. You know, we got a little little two-man setup at the forefront of top mid. But uh, I think A continues to be the issue. Right now, it's just Art doing his thing. Red and green, he's just doing his thing. It's very silent up until the execution. Calm before the storm at A. Molotovs follow. Ooh! Following suit. TRK with a Lady Luck gracing him for the first kill. It's going to slow down the bomb as smokes begin to fade. And Furia, well, they're just going to keep their crosshairs up. You know, CTs can go ahead and, and do as they please, try to throw something into the mix, go for the spams and whatnot. But look how Furia just recomposed. They prepare for themselves for any sort of a push and come out better for it. Three attackers still alive here in the post plant. Limited I health for Fur. Yeah. You like what? I just love how they're using K Serata's position to like pin the CTs into these two other choke points. Ooh. That one choke point does still prevail. Taco, he's able to get out. K Serato sent flying to the depths below. Smoke on top of the Bad bomb. Smoke. This is gonna create one of those chaotic situations. Look how far that timer's gone already. Oh. And he's killed the player who's supposed to give cover, but Taco, no if time, only is he it? had a little bit more. Oh. Oh, unfortunate man. for Taco, unfortunate for MIBR. That one comes down to the wire. That was a really beautiful shot on the fur though. He had to do that. 
right then. Um, that's that's nuts. That's that's really well done by him, moving around that smoke. It was off by a smidgen, but he did have to go around it. But here, this he gets. Boom. Caserado gets knocked off of the side of the building, but. For the beginning parts of the round, he's able to peek over the default box and stop them from taking any boosted spots to watch the smoke. They, they can take that fight first them if they want to, but he's very comfortable up there. And I think that's been a really good part of their executes. And that's when they're they're planting the bomb, delaying, waiting for someone to peek, using him to kill that guy. And then if no one peeks there, they're spamming Whoa. the other two choke points, and that's how they're getting a lot of the kills. Settle down now, Art. Switching over to the Glock here versus the Deagles. Sometimes I feel like Art just has a kill switch in his head. Like he, he may or may not be a cyborg programmed to entry frag. And when they flick that switch, he just sees black and goes. It works, seeing as he created such a distraction at the A site that B falls for free. But yeah, uh, I mean, the Glock shots were ambitious. Yeah, Art watches anime, so he's probably got a death note. <laughs> Would you go for it? Would I? Probably. What do I have to lose? My credibility? <laughs> Round 14. They're lining up and making lots of noise, so Penny is just playing around the smoke, using the audio to his advantage. Tries to continue the spam down, but he's got them all. Dead to right. Mm. Three frags for Henny at the close. 11 rounds for Furia. Still just three for MIBR. CT side has not been kind on Vertigo today. <sighs> You know what's funny is that the B site should be easier to retake now because it's easier to take because the site cover has been nerfed. But mm. what's changed as well is that forward aggressive control on B is a bit more is a bit better for the CTs, like to hold down the stairs, and I think that's what they're trying to encourage. But that's where T's can play in post plants while CTs mainly retake from CT spawn into kind of bad spots. So it's yep almost become a harder site to retake, which was a big problem from before, as well as the neither site to take, which usually doesn't happen at the Ooh. same time. Hold on. We've got a good exchange going on down here at the bottom of A. Art is the first casualty. Took a lot of effort from MIBR to get that far, but at least they've established the 5v4. And I like what you mentioned about the B site kind of changing. I think that uh, the biggest hit to the retake attempts is really losing mid window. You know, being able to go toolbox window and flank mm -hmm. around into the retake, being able to pinch like that, unless you have a player from the base of the stairs coming up, sure, you can pinch with the new top construction, but the only thing that you're peeking simultaneous is, say, green boxes or the bomb site. You don't actually get that deep vision like you would through window. So it's all fun and games. Yeah. You know, I like it when Valve shakes things up. TRK is shaken out of his hive tries to hide behind boxes and dies after just one, but still gets the job done, finds a little bit of information, and we can see MIBR splitting their forces to try and get this fourth round. It's their final attempt on the defense to improve the score, and here it comes. It's an all-in from Furia, just charging headstrong, up ramp, no short control whatsoever. Kea Serato, he's looking to take the top of the boxes to get the job done. He's using his teammate for the boost. And Fur's just gonna lurk right on through the smoke. 1v2 for Henny, denied. It's a fourth for MIBR. Yeah, at least they get the fourth round. They pull it off on the retake A. They've been struggling on retakes on both sides, so this is kind of nice. You know, we flip this over, who knows what happens. We hear Brazonic says about 11 fours. I believe it. I think, I uh, <laughs> We're live. Hello, Hello, everybody. We are back. We've returned. Thank you for joining us. Hey everybody, take a moment to appreciate what's going on here. DreamHack Masters Spring 2020, separated by regions, separated by distance, and yet the Counter-Strike fam out in full force. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that joins us all. CS. I'm like too daft to read the mini-map, but I think they're coming A. Yeah, they're, yeah, I, I look at that. I'm, I'm just thinking, <laughs> what map is this, man? And for some reason, my brain can never piece it together. But yes, they are clumped, grouped, collected outside of this A bomb site in full force. MIBR ready for it. They had the utility. They tried to big brain the frag grenades. But Vinny, he doesn't need a brain because he has two guns. And the first one connects, starts popping them off, rattling with the Berettas. A real threat here on short. And there's the flanking from Art as well. So oh, goodbye. Wow. 
wow, they got stopped in their tracks. Didn't didn't have time to go for the bomb plant. The Arts Lurk just turned into like a combat mechanism to help his teammates who are also fighting in the exact same point. I mean, MIBR, that's getting caught with their pants down, really. They, they yeah, haven't even I turned mean, the quarter on A-Ramp. They could have held the flank, got a kill. They didn't expect Art to be there. They didn't realize Vinny was pushed up with two freaking guns. So there's a whole bunch of things they got caught off guard by. That's tough. That's Not really ready deadpool. for the pace of Furia. Yeah, their insane pace. They skipped the one ball. Tenacity of the flank. But like you said, also could have been holding that with one player. That entire situation doesn't go that way if one person is back in the bottom of A watching flank. It's true. Um, it's tr it's so. true, and it's weird because there's not... It feels strange to watch flanks on this map. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now. And of course, you know, we're seeing it happen, so of course we should be watching the flanks. But it feels like right now, not that many teams are taking the risk of flanking. We saw KNG do it in the first half, and we saw Art do it just now. And that's making me think that we're probably going to see it more. But, you know, the last series we saw with the Straws and North, there was, I think, like zero flanks that entire game. So Remember when you could just drop down the elevator shaft from top mid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a thing. So, yeah, so that's, when, that's when flanks were weird. Let me keep it up, though. Whoa, whoa, okay, Art. That's, that's, that's a little, a little it's much. You need a new chaos drop now that you can't do it at B, I guess. He's working it. I mean, if anybody's going to pull it off, I put my stock on Art. I'm However, with this that. round, this round, he is made a fool, as those T's were already ready for his shenanigans. There are still a couple of players from Furia here poised on the ramp, and I, I like the way that Yuri's just tucked into this one. This is one of those unorthodox spots to hold. Same with Vinny, crouched behind sandbags. <laughs> Uh, or maybe it's more predictable than I expect, but they don't expect that. He decides to charge forward. He had two HP and Vinny caught fumbling his guns. Can Henny, with the element of surprise from the sandbags, come up with more than one? No, sir. Just the first kill and a good bit of damage onto Fallen, but he puts all of the job onto the shoulders of Case Torado. The spot is here. He taps and he's gone. Yeah, Caserato is going to be heard as well, so the bomb's going to start to walk back, but he's faking that on top of that fall back which means now there's a flank in play he's spotted again oh my god but now the bomb's gonna go back and he's not heard on the rotate so there's actually Taco's there's a deep. there's a chance if he predicts this peak from taco oh my god dude there's a no, freaking been, chance oh never mind he's been bamboozled he double unjuked himself yep brain bulged too big and he fell on his face although although He's not far away. Over. Mm -hmm. Taco, he's got all the health in this situation. Fallen, 20 HP. Chaos Dorado just hard clears this corner. I mean, Fallen's not anywhere to be found right now. So Chaos Dorado does have individual duels divided, but he just has to clean close right. And he will. Ah, but he loses out on the gun duel. Crisp aim from Taco is what prevails here in a very crucial round. MIBR already starting to chip away at that lead, but it is a huge lead. Don't forget. Really cool to talk about the mind games of that 1v3. You brought up how the floors are paper thin on this map and you can hear everything from below and above you and how that can be used to your advantage. Right? The, the manipulation goes both ways in some sense and that made it tricky for MIBR to figure out because they themselves got thinned out and lost a kill without a trade. Single scout. Couple of upgraded pistols, but this is MIBR's chance to bully with economic advantage. Gonna start taking a little bit of damage here. The pistol's popping off. Ooh, big headshot versus KNG, but he still stands. They know that there's a second one inside of this bomb site. Bomb not needing to commit at this moment, of course. Still more than a minute to play off of. No reason to get hasty. Nades of plenty. Good to see the utility being thrown forward here. Taco, though, just the one. Uh oh. Deagles starting oh. to do him dirty. Scout one shot taggable. lands as well. This is huge damage. These are huge frags. And more importantly, that bomb is now stranded. This could be real hard to watch. But no, sir. Fallen and KNG start to bring it back. Again, two of these three remaining members of MIBR are incredibly low, but Vinny is as well. 
for a moment, Furia seemed to have health and Fallen's had enough. He just charges forward, gets his 19th kill in the game, takes that lead down to just seven, but it's Furia 13, MIBR 6. He's got that 19th kill, that amazing 4K in the first half. He's definitely contributed a lot of impact kills in this game. Fortunately, it's amounted to six rounds in total. There are more problems than uh, just a uh, single player's performance in this game uh, for them to uh, come back into it. Furia, I mean, they're going to play with a lot of bravado, take some risks here as they have a lead. This may be one of them. Case Serato, hand over face, peeking into the A ramp into a bunch of T's. Risk his life to go for that opening kill aggressively. Art's going to do the same on the other part of the map, uh, but it's kind of evenly watched here from both sides. They boost up into the Molotov, which doesn't help their HP, but you know, five versus three, they're still fine. I'm curious, Mohan, what happens here if Furia's aggression, which we saw straight out the gate on their T side, understandably, especially once it was working so well. Mm -hmm. But now that they're on the defense, we are still seeing that that type of like hyper aggressive pace over on this A ramp. And I would argue it's not working. Uh, MIBR have good angles at holding this back. They've got the lineups on the spam. Um, and with all those things considered, I'm starting to wonder like what happens if MIBR force Furia into a slower pace, uh, a comfort zone for MIBR in comparison, and this lead starts to dwindle because all of a sudden this is not looking nearly as one-sided as it once was. Well, I would ask you then, like if you if you do slow down the pace and hold under the pressure and then continue to lose rounds, what's the best adjustment? Right, your options would be to continue the aggressiveness and just try to diversify the playbook, different directions perhaps, or Hold off on utility, let players take map control and just hold angles, I suppose. But that doesn't seem very Furia-esque to me. Right. It, it, maybe it's their style. Maybe it's their confidence on this map specifically when it comes to retakes. They seem to be really good at holding the sights. So, you know, that might feed into their psychological belief that it's they're kind of scared about um, the thought of retaking. Maybe they're just not as good at it. And obviously there's a lot of unexplored stuff with this map. And... In their scrims, they've seen more success in preventing the plants as opposed to uh, saving utility after the bomb has gone down. So, yeah, maybe if MIBR can win this battle, they'll expose Furia being one-dimensional. That all being said, Furia had such a good half that even if they have a poor half on the CT side, they can still trip over the finish line. And that's MIBR's biggest concern. You know, one player having a great round means Furia could potentially force a save. Oof. Whoa. He, okay. Like a peak like that, already prepared for it. Fallen. Quick headshot. And looking to follow suit through the ramp. But I, I will also praise Furia here. They got their rotators in quickly, although going to be caught by surprise. Vinny doesn't expect these players to have walked up already. I think Henny was maybe supposed to have this covered. And it goes from bad to worse. The three weapons that they had saved are the first three kills of the round. So now what's left of Furia is so ill-equipped for the situation that you know there's no chance. Five versus two, no guns for the CTs. They're going to fish them out of all the corners, all the cubbies, all the kills. Hmm. Yeah, we could potentially have a long game on, game on our hands. I wonder also what the round looks like if Fury are able to get that 5v4 early. They continue to blindly push down ramps on B on A as well, or do they change it a little bit? That's actually a beautiful kill from Fallen. It's almost a pre-fire up into the corner because that's the only thing that's not smoked out. Pays off, and it's going to scare Furia a little bit more. So what do we have now? The the buy up, I think we've got a tack paused here for Furia where they can talk about things. And this is a situation where on the CT side, they have a lot to discuss about how they're going to approach um, a lot of this a ramp presence you know i think one of the last things that you can do on this map is think about how to big flank as we talked about it just happens so seldomly but is that something that they want to employ now or in their minds is that a bit too obvious and instead how how do they stack a to the point that they feel comfortable but not leave b too weak find out another big quick clash over here on the ramp look at art i mean they're not shying away from what they want to force work oh and, oh for he doesn't expect art to be that much deeper i mean again just the the, the the chaotic nature of that situation all the utility all the different weapons and all of the different players trying to piece together what the hell is going on seems like mibr come out on the bottom of it in the end there now art revealing himself he's got himself three of the kills 
until Henny's on the board. Fallen I, I, has already hidden. I think Fur didn't hear anything because of the flashbang. Like, I, he might have been full flashed and then Art ran by him. And you would think comms would help him out, but... There's also a world where, where Art gets that first kill and then holds the S key for once in his life and goes back up ramp. Right. Um, you know, yeah, the player that, who that's died the thing. I would thought, not have had what, the call. When when Art gets that kill, you think he's probably good, right? Like, oh, kill this, this back kill. Up. No, he goes the long way and ends up seeing fur on top of that. Maybe that's how uncomfortable they are with the thought of giving up the A site, that they would rather fight as hard as they are for this happen. A aggression. I yep. think you're onto something, you know, with the way that you analyze the situation. Um, but again, because they had such a good half, we don't, they don't really have to find out um, if any other strategy works. If they can pull this off once every three rounds, they might BR have a serious problem on their hands. Of course, you know, in their own mind, uh, there's going to be a reason why it hasn't worked X amount of time so far. But with that score advantage, you get so many chances. Mm. Right off this, right off that, try it a fourth time and art pops off. Suddenly, you check the scoreboard again, and yeah, you are two rounds away from taking your map pick. So no need to overanalyze it, perhaps. Wow. Just let art do art and let Henny hold mid. He's picked up another kill, and that's the 5v4 for Furia. You were talking about where these 5v4s come from and what Furia looks like once they've got them. Well, they extend the advantage. Further damage versus Taco and Fallen as well. Henny just kind of standing out in the open, found a nice off angle to work with for that one kill. And because it was a lurk, no one around to trade his off angle. And that just obviously feeds into more and more frags as team as a team gets more desperate, more scared, like a wounded animal starts to jump at any opportunity. And a 5v, 5v4 turns to a 5v3 to a 5v2 now. Come on, TRK. Give us something to talk about. He's got the 1v1 here with Yuri. Ah, gets the first, but Art, quick exchange. Now it's all on Fallen. Who has played lights out, I may add. 21 and 15 at the moment. However, it's now known to the CTs exactly where he's at. He's got six seconds. Get the kill. Oh. He can pull this oh, off. He's got it. No. Oh, he, oh, oh no. He actually could have put the bomb down in 1v2. Oh, oh, I wanted Damn. the fallen clip. I wanted to yell my lungs out. And instead, he comes off plant. I mean, there's a world as well where somebody is sitting inside of elevator smoke, and I think that's what he anticipates. He goes for the plant, someone comes mm. through smoke, and then, you know, he would have had the bomb. Yeah. I mean, unless they both come out and he tries to get kills, I'm not sure. Chaotic yeah. situation as well, you know? Like, you have as much as, as as much time as we have to talk about it. He's got to process and make those decisions all the while, so. That's true. I forgive Fallen. Oh my god, look at our, I mean, he just did it again. Yep. And what's beautiful about this situation is he's doing it in the 4v5. They've already lost a player, so you know MIBR are going to be confident <laughs> with this moment. <laughs> Fallen's still watching smokes, even though there's a player to the left of Art. Don't forget, there's a T wrapping back now. TRK is going to deal with that. Threat neutralized. Mm, and KNG gets a power up. Doodly. And they they still regrouping here. Oh, the the it looks like Fury have decided to just overstack A, which is the completely wrong call. And Henny doesn't have any information, so that makes me believe that they're going to commit to this A play because they're they know they're doing it blind in the first place, just off of a feeling. It doesn't seem like there's any false call, but does that mean they're going to try to retake? I think that's the big question. I would think not. I mean, we know how the CT economy rolls nowadays. Winning a single round could be a death sentence. But yeah, we'll once again, guns. Is, isn't it crazy? Like, once again, Furia are so afraid of the bomb going down that they would rather gamble stack a site to defend against it than to try to allow for a plant or rely on a really amazing hold and then retake. They want any. They want to do anything but retake, basically here on the CT side. But it's like one Furia. of those situations where it's like that's your that's their issue, 
but at least mm -hmm. they know who they are. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Like, there's yeah, self-awareness yeah, yeah. sure. in that. They, yeah, yeah, I, I get exactly what you're saying. The, the game plan's struggling, but at least they're not in the middle of an identity crisis. Mm. Uh, they know what they're good at. Worse. They know what they're good at. They know what they're bad at. This is just the lay of the land for them at the moment. Yep. Oh, hopefully that's all true, and then they're not just oh, playing badly. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Still an op up in Fallen's hands. Curious to see what gets purchased around the saved pieces, and it was minimal at that. About three thousand dollars combined spent here between Art and Yuri. Get some armor. Get a smoke. Wait for the man next to you to die. Take his gun. Save money. It's all calculated. Taco over here towards bottom B gets into an engagement that costs him half his health. But uh, it seems like the Deagle of Art is hopeful that someone's going to walk up A. And I mean, if you're MIBR, you have to wonder, what is the A defense? If there's not somebody just plowing their way down ramp, then what are they up to? <laughs> just fury of things, really. They've netted a kill on the boost on the left last time. Yep. Yeah. And this yeah. one is... It's it's almost better because now... Oh. <laughs> He's dodging bullets here. He's going to try to retreat. And he will fall back in time. I was going to say, I, it, like, it's nice to do this boost as the second one because the, the there, tease would have already cleared the original boost spot by the time you're exposed to it. Yeah. They're, they're still committing. I mean, there's even spread here. There's still three rifles on the site. Smoke down at 30 seconds, that's huge. Either yeah. somebody's walking through that smoke into the pistol point blank, or they've got to circumvent it and just go all up ramp. But 25 seconds left over. I mean, Vinny, he just needs to stay back. Stay back, stay in cover, try and stop the bomb. It's MIBR to charge headstrong into this site. A little bit of spam trying to be thrown forward here, trying to create this distraction, the chaos. And that's a huge kill. TRK clearing out short now enables MIBR to easily fall back into their post plant, you would think. There are still kills elsewhere. Henny's flank, the bottom of all of this, put things into a pinch. And TRK again with what is one of the most crucial kills of the moment. First he gets short, now he deals with flank, and then MIBR are back at bat trying to close out this clutch. Chaos Serato denied, and MIBR take 10. All credit to TRK, as you mentioned. Two most critical kills there. Those are the two most threatening positions for the A ramp. The players on A ramp cannot focus on defending the bomb if they have to worry about the flank and if they have to worry um, about whoever it was there with the CZ. That was the that was as you mentioned. You know, they weren't hard kills. They weren't they weren't pretty kills by any means. They weren't like head clean headshot one tap flip reactions, but they were very important kills. It took out two very important positions. And uh, it looks like another two players get bested real fast as well as MIBR start now to climb into double digits. Clearing out the site, trying to deal with the rotators as the Deagle's next at bat. Just the one for Yuri. And that's it. That's MIBR officially improving on their previous Vertigo score. Something they had done from game one to game two, from now game two to three. So we give them props for that. They're getting closer. They're figuring out this Furia system. And I feel like Furia realized that, you know, I don't think at any point they've, they've continued to charge down a ramp thinking that, uh, thinking that they had them by surprise. They're at, they're asking for MIBR to participate in a gambit, a gambit down the a ramp where they risk it all to fighting art who can be incredibly tricky and loves to take risks. Oh my God. KNG actually got legs. That is a step in the right direction for Furia. Not only that, but they've halted the A aggression a little bit with an op on the site. This yeah, is going to be a tough round now for MIBR. I really like how you frame it. It's it's like Furia, they, they invite MIBR to meet them on A ramp. MIBR know exactly where they could find fights if they want to take them. There is no element of surprise. And if you don't Easily participate expected. in the gambit, then Art gets all of this map control mm -hmm. for free and you lose. Yeah, and, and at, at such a lopsided scoreline after such a successful T half from Furia, it's only going to take it working once or twice. And it has already worked once. We saw Art go down, blow away fur from inside the smoke, etc. Now it's Henny at bat. Oh. Oh, grabs the double, a third. And this is all you needed, baby. Four near five shots from Henny, all hitting the mark until the last. Fallen's going to have to pick up all of these pieces. He gives chase and gets that second kill. 35 seconds to try and clutch this, but he's going to fall right back into